we'll get more back to your apparently lack of ability to dress yourself and uh, <laughs> that was the first that day. was the first so day we, we can get right into it The Dirty Myrtle, On the Rum, Season 2. Here we go. I'm very excited that we're finally getting around to doing this. Wish Justin was coming this time around. I had every intention of going down to Myrtle Beach. Life gets crazy sometimes. Things get, you know, piled on top of you, and you got to, you know, take care of other things. Unfortunately, this trip got the X as far as my schedule went. So we left here. Originally, we were going to leave my house at midnight. Dave got here and like at like 10.30, 10.45, picked up Tucker at like 11.30 and we were just off. First thing I did when I got in the car with Dave was crack the uh, rain. We drove down, Burke drove the whole way, it was sweet. I hung out in the back and ate snacks. I honestly felt great. Once the sun came up, I was fine, good to go. First thing we did was we got there and Mike hands us all a beer and went to the beach, hung out for like an hour and then we were all, everybody was itching to play golf. So we went to, Tupelo Bay, we ended up playing the par three course and we decided, hey, you know what? We're gonna play 18, the first nine will be a warm up and then we'll start off the Stableford on the second nine. Stableford on this trip, which last last time we did this, we did we also did a Stableford, but it was very intense to where like basically everybody was hanging around level. This time we're like, F it, let's just points the whole time. Whoever has the most amount of points at the end of the trip wins. But the, the flip side to that is like you can wager your points once you get them after the 18 holes, you can wager them at any point. So gamble on whatever you wanted. There was points being thrown around on other groups as we're sitting on the back porch on individual matches of you know person versus person on I bet you don't make that putt on I bet you can't do 35 diamond push-ups in a row in the middle of a tiki bar after you've had four rum runners um a lot going on with the points I think it was a point for par two points for birdie so on and so forth and it was on that <laughs> First day we played Caledonia. Thoughts going into Caledonia, the first thing is like, I'm a, I love strants. Everybody knows I love quirky, I love undulation, I love weird stuff, and like, strants is my guy. I, I will continue to call him the rock and roll of golf architecture, cause like, he, that's just how he is. Just the drive into Caledonia really, really lets you know everything you need to know about that course. Driving down that lane and, and all the Spanish moss, and it's just gorgeous. Caledonia was like being thrown into the fire. Just to never have played 36 holes in a day and to play a course of that stature. Is that like, that's considered a fairly hard course, right? Yeah. yeah. That was gnarly. It was so stunning though, so beautiful. Big jungle vibes over there with the Spanish moss coming down from the, the, the windy trees and the, just, just the entrance of it was presented as beautiful. We met Mike down there and he was excellent. So yeah, talk, talk about Mike, that's your partner in prime. Yeah, my partner in prime, he's a GOAT. One of the best golfers I've ever seen in person play, so definitely excellent human being. Taking a leisure, leisurely stroll here. What are we on? 11? 12? 11? 12. On 12. We're on 12. Caledonia. Walk, don't ride. I'm gonna ride the back, or not the back. The next 36. We're playing 36. I keep calling the next 18 the back 18. Exactly. The, you at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride the back 18. 13 hour drive. Uh, you know, as you start to get a little older, really uh, hurts the lower back. I'm not gonna lie. So Caledonia Golf and Fish Club is a Strance design. Mike Strance design. It's actually his first full golf course that he designed as you know Mike Strance. I would say that it is 
a tamer Strantz design. It doesn't really kind of lean into some of those tendencies that we all know of, like Tobacco Road, True Blue, until you kind of get towards the back nine. So as far as a Strantz design, this is the second one I've played, Tobacco Road being the first on the last on the Rome. Much more tame, much more of a normal feeling golf course. You could see kind of the the beginnings of Strands figuring out his vibe and everything and, and what he wanted to do with golf courses, you know, seeing those waste areas starting to come into play, but nothing like you see at the other ones where they're just all over the place. It played like a fairly regular course with a, a couple quirky little strands things thrown in. The layout there is very well thought out. Every hole feels like its own hole. At no point does anything feel like it's out of place. Nothing was stuck there. Everything feels like it was a purpose. You know, it. this is this dude's debut album. He really wanted to knock people out of the park and I think he did a phenomenal job doing that. The first 10 holes, it's like Strance was trying to stay in his box. Like, don't yeah. do something crazy. And it's like, after that, he's like, oh, it, I'm gonna send it. I'm gonna do some weird shit. I'm gonna do a 90 degree dog leg. I'm gonna put water all the way up in front of a tree in the fairway. Like, he's getting, like, he's actually being straight. Yeah. How did you play in your two rounds at Caledonia? Um, didn't play great at Caledonia. First rounds down there. Um, felt like going into the second round, I was I was getting a little something going, and then it just didn't pan out. It's misery. It it's it it's it's really bad when you're having a rough go of it because those courses out there are tough. All right, gents, let's get a first round recap. Two out of ten. Two out of ten. <laughs> the round was awesome. definitely a two out of ten round. That's all right. Warm up round. <laughs> Warm up 18. Pretty sure on uh, the 13th hole you said something along the lines of, I can't believe I have to fucking do this again. Today. <laughs> Today. Well, we'll call it a roller coaster, right? A lot of ups, a lot of downs for all of us. Tempers were tested, I think, for everybody. I think a few people threw clubs, myself included. Yeah. You did? Uh, you he did. Club, did you? I did. Did you throw a club? I didn't throw a club. The course is great. I've, I've realized that my best way to get points is just to gamble, not uh, based on golf. So we're going to focus on that. My recap is that... How was the round? How was the round? How was the round? Not good. How was the course? Two out of ten. The, the course was a ten out of ten. Eleven out of twelve out of ten. How are you feeling going into the afternoon? Hey. Well, no, I'm... I'm Sheesh. Sheesh. I'm excited to, to go do another round for sure. We're going we're gonna to ride. We walked, which, you know, I think all of us here like to enjoy walking, but 36 holes is definitely a lot. Okay, that's about to ruin your yeah, afternoon. Right. Yeah, ruined. right. Ruined. During the second round, the second 18, we did a match, um, Tucker and I versus Dave and uh, Mike, best ball, we did a NASA. Um, there was a lot going around, but I th things were still pretty tight, you know? I think it was like Mike, Tucker, and I were, were pretty close. I don't remember who was in first at that point. It was all pretty close still. say I got some beers in me. Hey. Because we'll have another one. <laughs> How you feeling there, guy? Oh, I'm way back there. Good. Feeling all right. I was hoping to play a little better in the second round. Not playing bad, but just not as good as we were thinking. You know you're better, you're the lowest gross right now? Uh, that, I mean, no one else is playing well. <laughs> that, that doesn't say anything about me. It says something about the rest of you. Of course it's sick. Yeah. And honestly, it's very scorable, very playable. Um, there's nothing like super crazy as far as like difficulty. It's just there's a lot of like unique, quirky stuff. That's, you can that's easily fun, put yourself in trouble, I think, is what it is. Right, right. And it, as long as you keep the ball in play, you're going to be fine. But you get into some of those bunkers and waste areas, things get tough. Yeah, like 
Not in a good way, that is fucking... Remember when that was going to be a really cool shot and some really good footage? It visually probably looks really cool, you know? Is that you just short? Yeah. Oh, that's not even bad. I chunked the f*** out of that. I mean, it was like, online. Like, like, like the, did you not see? I chunked, literally hit like four inches behind the ball. Do you want to trade? What? No, no. I'll take my shot. You're the, the f***. Bunker. The bunker is pretty fun. <laughs> Favorite hole would be the 13th hole. Don't remember the yardage specifically. Par four, very beautiful hole. It's a dog leg left and you have a tree on the left hand side. You want to hit like an iron or something that you can hit like a 215, 225 shot. The first time Mike kind of gave us the rundown, hit a shot out there. The second time I was like, I'm going to try and sling a five iron and I slung it the best I could and it put me in a prime spot. Ended up chunking the wedge because, you know, don't have a full club in hand. You're going to desell. But man, that golf hole is just absolutely stunning, especially your approach shot into that green, because that's where, that's the point where I was like, I'm on a strength golf course, because it was a green, everything just kind of sloped down into these waste areas on right yeah. and left side, and then you had this water in the background, it just, it looked absolutely stunning, and the second round, it was like later in the day, and the sun was kind of starting to set, and the shadows were coming out, and it just, it just looked gorgeous. It was almost like its own little world when you got, you got in there. I think uh, Salty even said that one's very cool because you can't really hit onto another hole. It was wild, very, very like tropical vibes. Uh, gators all over the place, water, it just ugh, the <laughs> sand pits, the bunkers are just. Half a half a half a hole, half a fairway is f bunkers there. It's like ridiculous, but I got some good practice getting out of them, you know. So I think there's like a stigma on golf as far as like the favorite course is a course that you played the best at. Caledonia will always be my favorite. It's just it's got the purest vibes. Like it just it's very chill. It's very welcoming, and I don't think there's any anxiety when you get to that course. You're just like cool. Look where I am. You know, everything is just super scenic. And I hope you enjoyed walking it because I think it's one of the best walking courses you can get and just and just the most enjoyable walk you can get. It's really cool just because it can get you in a go zone. And it's one of those par fives where like, if you go for it, you have to commit. And if you don't, there's no room on the front of that green to hold your ball. If it doesn't get it up there, you're in the water. And that's what happened. A lot of work goes into maintaining it, all the landscaping, all the flowers, the, the Spanish moss coming down from all the trees. It's it's sick. It's so pretty. And then you get between nines and they just have a chowder shack sitting there and you, you get a free cup of chowder on your way to the next nine. That should be a thing at every single golf course in the world. I don't know why it's not. What are we, one up, two up? You, you won the back. But you are, we're, we're one dormy. Down, we're one down total. No, no, we're, we're, we're all square right now. So we're all square? I thought we were, yeah, you guys. Yeah, you won that whole to take us, bro. Or no. Wait. I thought we pushed that hole. Yeah, no, we I thought we pushed that hole. Yeah. So we're so one we're down. Dormy. So we're one down going to 18. Oh. oh. Oh, that's bomb. We playing another 18 or what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't playing.
holes today. So we, we had a little match going, uh, Tucker and I versus uh, Mike and Dave, and we thought we were all square, but we really weren't. We were three up on the front, and we thought that they were three up on the back, but they were really five up on the back. So you do the math. I don't keep moving. There was an ass whooping. So Did we win? We thought, yeah, you won. Like, like going and playing a strands course, you got to play there twice. Like, I think 36 holes is the way to go. I think I'm glad that when we played both these golf courses, True Blue and Caledonia, we played them 36 holes because it, the second round, it gave us more course management. It gave us more course knowledge. So I think, you know, Mike was more knowledgeable on the golf course, but I think it's just like it, that. that's just kind of what it ties into is just playing smart and, and really thinking your way through every shot. Like... And, and that's the thing about Caledonia is because Caledonia is so beautiful, it's a distraction. Like it, it, it takes your mind kind of off the golf and like you're kind of wowed by the scenery that like you, you kind of stop thinking about what you're actually doing. I mean, that's just kind of my two cents on that.